Hello, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for allowing me to share these thoughts with you. We're going to talk more about adversity and the Hebrew word for adversary, which is Satan. We're going to talk about life and adversity and the adversary and Christ, too. But I need to apologize briefly right up front again for the appearance of my face. I was tempted not to make this video, but I don't. I, I'm going to make it anyway. I'm going through a chemotherapy treatment for precancerous skin cells, and I've got eight days left, so it's going to get worse, but then it will heal, and within a month or so, it should be back to normal again. I apologize for the appearance. Let us talk about what some people have taught. I was taught this as a boy, as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I was taught that, that we learn through adversity and that we're going to uh, progress because of adversity. The Latter-day Saints, more than I believe any other Christian sect, they idolize adversity, all the way from the hand carts and crossing the plains and going through adversity, you know. But let us look, look closely at what is being said in the mind frame of this. In the Garden of Eden, was there adversity? No, there was not adversity. What is the word for adversary in Hebrew? Satan. You know, we are told that, at least as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that there were one-third of the hosts of heaven that followed Satan and wanted Satan to be their Christ, their Savior. Satan means in Hebrew, literally, the word adversary. I'm going to ask you this question. Can you have adversity if there is no adversary? If there is no Satan, no adversary, could you have adversity? No, you cannot. You cannot have adversity without the adversary. And so to say that we are going to be saved through adversity and progress because of adversity, you must then call the adversary, which is the Hebrew word Satan, your Christ. Did you know that's what you're literally doing? Did you know that when you say that if Satan had not chosen, they believe Satan, he had choice. Latter-day Saints believe that Satan had cho choice. If Satan had not chosen to tempt Eve, would the fall of man be? No, because she was never going to eat that fruit. She never would have eaten it on her own. She had to be tempted and beguiled and lied. Beguiled means lied to in order to eat that fruit. And Satan, Latter-day Saints believe, that that was his choice. Did Heavenly Father force Satan to do that? No. So when you say, in this world, we pass through adversity, and I want to remind you again what the Apostle Paul taught. The Apostle Paul taught that the God of this world is Satan. He literally said this, the God of this world is the adversary. And Latter-day Saints, again, teach in their theology that we must pass through this world in order to be exalted and become gods and receive exaltation as it is defined in section 132 of the Doctrine and Covenants. In order to receive what the Doctrine and Covenants says in section 132, exaltation, which means being above the angels. The angels are, it talks about the angels in section 132. It says they exist in their saved condition and remain in their saved condition individually and singly for all eternity. But exaltation to a Latter-day Saint means being above that. It means being in the new and everlasting covenant of marriage and being exalted and becoming what Latter-day Saints call a God. Now, that is what Latter-day Saints mean by exaltation. Latter-day Saints do not believe that just being saved like the angels are from physical and spiritual death, for they're in the presence of God, the angels are, and remain in their separate single condition, it says in section 132. 
that that is enough for a Mormon. A Latter-day Saints, they say, we want to be higher than that. We want to be above the stars of heaven and exalt our thrones to the utmost heights above the clouds and be like the most high. That is what they mean by exaltation. And they believe they cannot attain that unless they pass through adversity and are born in this world, of which the Apostle Paul said the God of this world is Satan. Are you putting the pieces together right now? Would Latter-day Saints be able to receive their exaltation if Satan had said, I'm not going to tempt Eve? The answer is no. And President Gordon B. Hinckley, the former president, one of the former presidents of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, taught, and I believe he taught it in the late 90s or early 2000s, but he called the fall of man a fall upward again. And he meant that by denoting that we could not have exaltation if Satan had not caused Eve to fall by beguiling her and if he had not chosen to do that. So what I'm telling you is, Latter-day Saints, look at your theology closely. Who is your savior, really? You said we would not be able to progress and become like our Heavenly Father, become like the Most High, Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. Why hast thou fallen, O Lucifer? He said five I will statements. What did he say? We've talked about it. What were the five I will statements that Lucifer said that the Bible testifies is why he fell and will be thrust to hell? The first one, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. The stars of God, again, are the angels in Hebrew scripture. They're called the stars of God, the sons of God. I will exalt myself to the utmost heights of the Mount of Assembly, the Mount of Congregation, which is the Mount of the Gods. He said, I will be above the clouds and I will be like the Most High. That's why he fell. Now, let's look at Latter-day Saint exaltation. Could you receive that if Satan had never tempted Eve? You believe that was his choice. Did he have free choice? Did Satan, according to Latter-day Saint theology, have free choice? Was that his choice to tempt Eve? Could he have said, no, I'm not going to tempt her? According to you, Satan had choice. And because of his choice, now you have the opportunity to be exalted and become a god and be above the angels. You have no idea, unless you do now, unless you have your eyes have been opened now through this, that you are actually calling Satan your Christ, your leader, Christ. He said, Jesus said, you only have one master, Christ. And that word in the Latin Vulgate and in the Greek, that word master was teacher, leader. So many of you go, oh, through adversity, I'm being taught so much. Really? Then the adversary must be your teacher your Christ. Through adversity, he's your master, he's your teacher, he's your Christ. You see, you did say that one third of the hosts of heaven followed Satan and called him Christ. In Abraham chapter 3, verse 27, you said there were two in the preexistence. One was Jesus Christ, and the other was Satan. And Satan wanted to be called Christ. He wants to usurp the authority of the Father and be called Father. And I guarantee you that if you receive Mormon exaltation, as is defined in section 132 of the Doctrine and Covenants, Satan will be saying this. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be exalted and become a god. It's because I tempted Eve. That's what he's going to say. Because logically, that will be the truth. I want you to understand that through your theology, logi, logic, the logic of your theo, which is um, the Greek word for God, I want you to understand that you are, like it or not, you're calling Satan your savior because, because it's a fall upward. Adam had a fall upward and now we can be exalted and he saved us so now we can progress and become gods because salvation is not good enough for you. Because otherwise, you'd be just like the angels and wouldn't receive your exaltation. 
But that exaltation means that it all hinged on Satan and his choice to tempt Eve.